the vector summation, and and that's it for for this ch chapter. So there are not so much uh, difficult content. But starting from chapter twenty two, you may feel uh, more difficult. Um, okay, so chapter twenty one is uh, about Coulomb's law, Coulomb Ding Lu. Uh, so um, in this section, we will talk about the original uh, Coulomb's law and the charges quantized, and also charges conserved. So. Um, so it is some magic. So uh, so we have a simple experiment. So we have two glass rod, uh, where each rod with a steel cloth, and uh, one was suspended by three. Which means that uh, this is a glass rod. This is another glass rod, and then if we rub it uh, with a steel cloth, and then there will be a force uh, repelling them. Uh, so that the force acting on this rod to this side and another uh, force acting on this one uh, on this side. However, if we just uh, exchange one of the glass rod as a uh, plastic rod uh, and then we still rub these two rods uh, <coughs> Uh, at this time, um, these two rods will attract each other uh, rather than repelling each other. So, oh, so this is a question: Is it a magic? Hmm. Maybe I just okay. I need to deny like this. Otherwise, uh, there will be a problem. So uh, okay. So next, um, we try to explain this phenomenon. Uh, so for the first case, uh, we'll assume that uh, two charge rods of the same size repelling each other. So for the both glass rod, there are positive charge on it, so that uh, they will repel each other. However, for for this case, the glass wall have positive charge and the plastic have negative charge, so that they will attract each other. So I think uh, even you know that uh, when you are a primary student. Um, so here uh, it summarizes a particle with the same sign of electrical charge repel each other and the particle with opposite sign attract each other. So actually, there are um, different types of material. The first one is the conductors. There are uh, free electron to move on. So for example, metals. And the other one, and the other type of material is insulator or long conductors. Uh, there are no uh, free electron. The charged particles are not uh, free to move. Uh, example, rubber, plastic, and uh, glasses. Glass. Uh, the third type of material is semiconductor. Uh, when you learn the chemistry, uh, the periodic table, so that the semiconductor, semiconductor usually uh, in the in the middle. And for example, it is silicon, germanium for computer chips. And there are intermediate. Uh, so there are some sort of uh, uh, charged particle which can be moved on. The semiconductor. The um, conductivity is uh, lie between the conductor and insulator. So, but the good point is that uh, we can really control. We can control this uh, this phenomenon so that we can use it for uh, CMOS circuit. And the fourth type is superconductor. You may not be so familiar with it. But um, it is uh, some uh, fancy material. Uh, they are perfect conductors. However, uh, it need to uh, you need a very low, very very low temperature so that uh, some material can act as a superconductor. To temperature should be as low as um, uh, 
uh, one one Kelvin, one Kelvin, lower than one Kelvin, then the material can be um, uh, at a superconductor, and they are of uh, perfect conductivity. Um, especially some, uh, I have a friend uh, working on the quantum computer, so they need they need some chamber so that. Uh, uh, they use some uh, liquid uh, helium to uh, make their uh, circuit uh, acting, uh, just working on uh, very, very low temperature. But okay, that is not so important in, in this course, actually. Okay, uh, so for charged particle, the property of uh, conductor and insulator are due to structure and electrical nature of atom. So, uh, so I suppose you have learned it in um, high school in the chemistry class. So for each atom, there are protons, neutron, and electron. And um, are packed tightly together in a central nucleus. The proton and neutron are packed tightly together in central nucleus and do not move, and the electron are rotating the, the nuclear. Uh, when atom and uh, conductor like copper come together to form the solid, and some of the outer moles and the Lucy help, electron become free. Uh, to wonder about that. Okay, so actually there are some iron which is uh, positively charged, some are negatively charged, and uh, actually these these are not so really important. And okay, this concept is uh, more important. This is the induced charge. So rather than this case, these are insulator. For this case, this is a copper, which is a conduct, which is a conductor, and this is still a uh, plastic rod. So, uh, originally, this uh, copper is uh, neutrally uh, uh, electrically neutral, which means that there are no net charge on this copper rod, and now we rub the plastic. Uh, rod so that it uh, has negative charge and then we put this charge close to this copper rod then uh, this copper rod will have induced charge which means that this copper rod is still uh, electrically neutral however there will be some induced charge positive charge uh, which means that uh, there are some electron will be repelled by this rod and then will go to this end because negative charge repel each other so that the negative charge go to uh, the other end so that uh, this end will have a positive net charge but overall is still uh, electrically neutral and it turns out that these two rods will attract each other. These two rods will attract each other. So this is the main difference for the uh, conductor and insulator. Actually, we will not call, uh, we will not uh, uh, see much about the semiconductor or superconductor. But, uh, conductor and insulator are more important in this course. So the main difference is that for insulator the charge are not free to move. If I just uh, assign oh, the charge are distributed like this, then you do not assume that the, the charge will move. Uh, however, this one is a conductor, so that uh, there will be induced charge. The electron can, can be free to move to the other end and to make this end uh, positively charged. So this is an important concept up to now. Any questions? Okay.
So next, uh, we talk about charge, charge. So just now, uh, we have talked about the positive charge or negative charge. And the charge usually denotes as Q, denotes as Q. And the SI unit, uh, SI unit for the charge is Coulomb, Coulomb. C. So uh, unit is very important as an engineer student. So uh, you really need to remember the SI unit for a different uh, variable. And I, I is the um, current, current, which means the movement of charge is the current. So we take the time derivative with respect uh, to the time with respect uh, time derivative to the to the charge, which is the which is the current. And so the current, the uh, actually the SI unit for the current is ampere, ampere. So that this is Coulomb. Uh, So Q is uh, Q is Coulomb, time is second, time is second, this is A. So uh, so we have uh, A is A is uh, C S inverse or C over S. So actually Coulomb is actually uh, uh, one A S. 1 a s so you you multiply s on both sides actually the dimension we can write it like this so you multiply second on both sides then coulomb is uh, m per second m per second so so this is the si unit and so here comes the Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law describes the electrostatic force between two charged particles. If the charged particle uh, have charge charges Q1 and Q2 are separated by distance r and are uh, at rest relative to each other. Uh, although this assumption is um, not really practical, but um, for electrostatic, uh, we need to have some sort of uh, assumption to to make things easier. So uh, so let's keep this assumption, and so they are at rest or moving only slowly relative to each other. Then the magnitude of the force acting on each due to the other is given by this. Uh, formula. This formula, I suppose you have learned it in uh, high school. So uh, the force is actually one over four pi epsilon naught q one q two over r square, and r is the unit vector of r. So um, actually, for q one q one, the r axis is uh, counting from here, from q two, from q two. Something like here. This one is r equals zero. Uh, actually, actually, it's only this point because um, uh, you can consider um, this is the spherical coordinate, which you may uh, learn it in the multivariate calculus class. But uh, this is not a math class, so I don't spend too much time explaining this. And actually. Um, for the force acting on Q1, Q1, um, you have the R equals zero counting uh, at here. And the magnitude of R is, of course, the distance between uh, Q1 and Q2. And the uh, direction is uh, from Q2 to Q1. So that this one is the unit vector of R1, uh, unit vector of R, unit vector of R. And of course, we call it a unit vector. Of course, the magnitude of this one is one. Is one. Okay. So on the other hand, if we consider the force acting on Q two, 
we have the original pawn at here for q1 and then the out head will be uh, pawn, will pawn to the the opposite side for q2 this this one is for q2 this one is for q2 this one is for q1 so for when we count for the uh, q1 the out head should should be like this and for q2 out head should be like this so in spherical coordinate or polar coordinate or a cylindrical coordinate uh, for for different um, position the unit vector are different it is not uh, it is not uh, really the same as the Cartesian coordinate uh, for example in high school when you learn the Cartesian coordinate you have x axis y axis so the unit vector in x axis is also uh, pointing in this direction we usually denote it as i and for y axis the unit vector we usually call it j we call it, usually call it j sometimes we just ignore this this dot uh, some font will not uh, will not uh, write this uh, dot sometimes you will be right like this j Oh, sorry, uh, this is the problem of the PowerPoint. I I don't know. Uh, so sometimes we don't we just ignore the, the dot. So we write it uh, J hat I hat, and if we have a uh, three coordinate x y z x y z the that one is should be k i j k i j k so. This is the unit vector for the Cartesian coordinate. Uh, and for Cartesian coordinate, uh, the unit vector will not influence uh, for different position. However, for uh, for polar coordinate or or spherical coordinate, cylindrical coordinate, different point will have different uh, unit vector. So it will be more difficult, but uh, for undergraduate student, uh, you don't really face it too much, but uh, just keep it in mind. And the punchline for this uh, equation is that uh, it does, uh, this, this formula will hold no matter Q1 or Q2 are positive or negative, which means that if both Q1 and Q2 are positive, so this term is positive, this term is also positive, so that the force is also positive. And when we consider, um, let's say, when we consider this force for Q1, when we consider the force for Q1, we consider this uh, unit vector, and this term is positive, so that the Force is also, of course, pointing to this side, pointing to this side, and if um, if either one of them are negative and the other one is uh, positive, then this force is negative. Then the force will be negative, and it will point to this side. F F prime. Okay. Uh, if both of them are negative, so they have, they have the same sign, so this one is also positive, and then they repel each other, so that the force also point to this side. So no matter uh, Q1 and Q2 are positive or, or negative, this, uh, uh, this single equation can, uh, can tell all the, all, the, all, the, all the facts. And in this equation, uh, we have a constant called epsilon naught or epsilon zero, uh, which is the permittivity constant. Permittivity constant, uh, the value is 8.85 times 10 to minus 12 Coulomb square new, uh, per Newton meter square. Uh, you don't really need to remember this uh, number. I will just give you uh, during, the, during the quiz or exam. 
and sometimes we will just simply keep this uh, whole 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 as k and this is actually uh, 8.99 times 10 to 9 uh, newton meter square per coulomb square and we just simply write it as k so to make this uh, equation uh, look uh, uh, look uh, more compact so this is the coulomb law any questions okay so i think this is pretty easy i you should learn it before okay uh, so this this size uh, just repeat what i mentioned so if both charge are positive then uh, they have the same sign so that they repel each other the, uh, the force is positive if both are negative uh, this sign is also uh, positive so that they also repel each other but if one of them um, positive one of them are negative then they will uh, attract each other and this one is negative so that uh, when you consider r hat for this one then f should be point to this side and if you consider this one r hat r hat is uh, point to this side and this one is f uh, okay so um, just now we just mentioned the case for two charged particles if we have more than two charged particles uh, we need to uh, calculate uh, the electrostatic force between uh, them one by one for example if we have um, n charges n charges one to small n, one to small n, one to three four five to small n. So if we really want to calculate the um, electrostatic force acting on charge one, then we need to calculate the Coulomb's force for, uh, between one and two, one and three, dot 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 until uh, one and n. And we add all of the uh, force together and actually the force is a vector so that you um, you need to act the um, x-axis component uh, individually and then add the y-axis component individually then uh, actually this is the vector sum I suppose you have learned it before so uh, we talk about another called the shell theories shell theory uh, we don't really have a explanation uh, uh, now and, and in chapter 23 for the Gauss law we will talk about an explanation for this but so far you can just uh, keep it in mind first keep it in mind first there are two versions for the shell theory for electrostatic force so the first one, it is mentioned that a charged particle outside a shell with charge uh, uniform distributed on its surface attract or repel as if the shell charge were concentrated as a particle in its center. Um, charged particle outside a shell. So here, which means that we have a shell. We have a shell. So uh, the charge um, the charge are uniformly distributed uniformly distributed uh, on the shell. Uh, so we can just assume all the charge are distributed at the center. Then we can just uh, calculate using the Coulomb's law. We can just assume all the all the charge are distributed uh, at the center, and that's it. So the important keyword is uniform distributed. Uniform distributed. 
So when it is a uh, conductor shell, it is usually uh, uh, uniform distributed. But for the um, uh, insulator or uh, dielectric uh, shell, it is not necessary like that. Usually the, the question will tell you uh, how do we assume the, the charges distribute. But uh, this is the case, uh, usually work for the, the conductor shell and the charge will uh, usually uh, uniform dig distribute on the shell and then you can just assume all the charge is distributed at the center instead then you can calculate the, the, the force uh, generated by this charge. And for the second theory, for the second shell theory, a charged particle inside a shell with charge uniform distributed on the surface, also the with this keyword uniform distributed uh, on the surface, has no net force, no net force acting on it due to the shell. Which means that uh, if we have a, a shell which has a uniform dis uh, distributed charge on the surface, inside the shell there are no net force uh, generated by the by this shell. Which means that uh, suppose uh, we have a shell something like this. Uh, there may be some charge. Uh, there may be some charge distributed on the surface uniformly. So there are totally no left force inside, no matter at this point or at that point, something like that, or even at the center, there are no left force inside the shell, but. For the outside, you can just assume all the charge are uh, distributed on the center and then outside the shell, there are force. If it is a positive uh, force, of course, it will impel the charge outside. Maybe I can... Uh, I can rewrite it a bit, uh, which means that uh, if we have uh, we have some charge distributed here, 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 and here, then if we have a uh, no matter we have a um, positive charge or uh, pos maybe we have a positive charge here, then there will be no force acting between this one and between all the shell on uh, between all the charge on the shell which means that all the char uh, all the force acting on it will um, will actually uh, cancel each other will cancel each other um, something like this so there will be a force acting on it, and uh, and the sum of all the a force. Uh, suppose we have a charge on the cell, then all the all the force will cancel each other. However, if there are a charge, uh, if there is charge outside, we can just assume all the charge are distributed, distributed at the center, distributed at the center times eight. So that uh, this charge and this one will attract each other, will attract each other, because uh, I assume this one is positive, this one is negative. If this one is, if this one is uh, positive, they will repel each other, as if all the charge are uh, distributed in the center. So, any question for the shell theorem, shell theory? No, very easy. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, checkpoint. Uh, the figure shows two proton, two proton. 
So this one is proton, P, P a proton. Uh, one electron, this one is, is electron. Uh, uh, on an axis. Uh, so on the central proton, what is the direction of the force due to the electron? What is the force? So I ask you about this proton. What is the direction of the force due to the electron? Anyone can answer this question. What is the direction uh, of the force due to the electron? I think on this one. Any response? On to the left. On to the left, right. On to the left. left. So uh, next, uh, the force due to the other proton. The force due to the other proton. Also left. So this is due to the electron, this one due to the right proton. So what is the net force acting on this proton? A left, left, net force. So they, they react together, right, left, left. Okay, uh, so here is a sample problem. Sample problem. So, uh, figure A shows two uh, positively charged particles fixed in the place, uh, fixed in a place on an x axis. So, this is x axis. Uh, the charge are Q1 and Q2. Q1 and Q2. And the particle separation. R is 0 0.02 meter meter. So uh, be careful about the um, uh, the the unit. Uh, sometimes the question gives you the meter. Sometimes give you the centimeter, and you need to um, convert it to the SI unit. Usually the SI unit for length is uh, meter. Usually meter. So what is the magnitude and direction? Magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force on particle one from particle two, on particle one. So actually, the uh, both both are both of the charge are positively charged, so that they will repel each other, right? Each other, and so. So actually, F12, F12 are uh, K, uh, Q1, Q2 over R square. R square. So actually, K is 8.99 times 10 to 9. Uh, so Q1 is 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. Q2 is uh, 3.2 times 10 to minus 19. And R is 0 0.02 squared. 0 0.02 squared. So using the calculator, you can find it uh, as 1.15 times 10 to minus 24 Newton Newton so or you uh, we can write it as a vector form f12 is actually uh, minus 1.15 times 10 to minus 24 uh, Newton I because uh, B 
this line is the positive of x-axis, so this one is negative of x-axis. So we have a negative sign times the unit vector of x. Any questions? So pretty easy. I suppose you've learned it before. Uh, so for for part B, uh, because C uh, is uh, identical to the previous one, except the particle three is now lie. Uh, except particle three now lies on the x-axis between. So the, we have Q three here, and particle three uh, has charge uh, Q three at a uh, distance 3 r over 4 from uh, particle 1 what is the next uh, electrostatic force on particle 1 due to particle 2 and 3 due to particle 2 and 3 so actually uh, f12 is actually the same as uh, the previous page so we only need to calculate f uh, f13 F13. Likewise, F13 is K uh, okay, we can put it uh, Q1 Q1 Q3 R square and this is 8.99 times 10 to 9 and Q1 is still 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. Um, so Q3 is 3.2 times 10 to minus 19. And R here is uh, R is 0. Uh, capital R is 0 0.02. So this is uh, 0 0.02 times 3 fourth square so this is a uh, 2.05 times 10 to minus 24 Newton Then we can write it as uh, F13 is uh, 2.05 times 10 to minus 24 Ni. So the net force acting on the net force, the net force will be just uh, F12 plus F13. So it is actually uh, 9 times 10 to minus 25 Newton I. So actually, um, you can just calculate the um, you can just calculate the uh, magnitude of F13 and then uh, you use your uh, own method to determine the um, to determine the direction of the of the force or you can re on, only rely on the math you just uh, make it uh, F13 uh, uh, you can use all the um, vector notation to make all the calculation, then you all the way rely on the math. But sometimes it, it will be easier to um, to think of the direction by yourself. Then you will make less mistakes, maybe. Um, so let me finish this part and then we have a break. Uh, so for this part, uh, figures, uh, figure E is identical to the previous one except the particle 4. Particle 4 here is now included. Uh, it has a Q 
Mm, this one should be Q4. I suppose this one should be Q4. This one, this one should be Q4. I think uh, it's at distance also 3 r over 4 from particle 1, but uh, lies in a line that make an angle theta equals 60 degree. 60 degree uh, with the x-axis. What is the net electrostatic force on the particle 1 due to particle 2 and 4? So actually using the same um, Coulomb's law, we can actually calculate that uh, F14 is uh, uh, no hat. is uh, actually uh, 2.05 times uh, 10 to minus 24 newton. However, we uh, need to separate this force into the uh, x component and the y component and the y component. So actually F14 will be um, 2.05 times 10 to minus 24. Uh, this one should be cosine 60 degree, cosine 60 degree, and in x direction plus uh, 2.05 times 10 to minus 24. This sign is sine 60 degree Newton in y direction, j, j, something like this. So uh, this one cosine, cosine, this is cosine, cosine here, this is sine, okay. Uh, So, um, so actually we can calculate uh, F1 net is actually uh, F12 plus F14, which is um, minus 1.25. Uh, times 10 to uh, minus 25 Newton uh, in I direction plus uh, 1.78 times 10 to uh, minus 24 Newton in Y direction. So that's the that's the answer for uh, for this problem. Any questions? So you can uh, drop notes by yourself, uh, or um, actually, I will upload uh, my notes on the UM Moodle after the class or I will also upload uh, these slides with uh, with my notes uh, to the UM Moodle also so uh, it depends on you uh, you can uh, choose every uh, choose the way you like <laughs>